tears run deep after losing her 19-year-old daughter, Samaya Spain. This cell phone video obtained by PIX11 News shows the moment Spain and her twin sister, Sanaya, were brutally attacked. That's Samaya apparently being stabbed in the chest and neck. But we are stopping the video right there. Those were deadly points that he punctured in her body that even if she fought it, I don't think she could have won the fight. LaShawn Goodson is more than heartbroken, thinking about the death of her daughter, but how she died, Goodson says, makes the pain that much harder. She didn't want to be bothered. Why did she have to die? Because she, you're not who she want to be accompanied by. Walk away. Don't, don't hit on no girl. Don't fight no female. No matter what, go on about your business. It all started early Sunday morning. Her twins went to grab food at this deli on St. Mark's Place. A man apparently was trying to hit on the teens. After rejecting his advances, things escalated from there. At one point, the deli owner had to lock the doors to keep the man out. The twins thought the coast was clear, but once they walked out of the deli... My daughter, Sanaya, was arguing with the guy in my daughter's defense outside and he stabbed her and she went to the floor and at that very moment Samaya went to attack him and he stabs her in the heart and when she went down he stabs her in the neck while this mother tries to deal with her grief she sends a message to the person responsible I just want him to suffer every day like I am I want him to wake up every day in a cell just like I gotta wake up every day with my mind in a cell and the community wants the same thing, standing in solidarity with the family. No means no in our community. If in fact that this woman didn't want you to say anything or do anything to her, you should have just walked away. So the call to the action right now is to say to the individuals that committed this crime, turn yourself in. You may run, but you're not going to hide. All right, folks, <clears throat> we are back here on Straight Out of the Cannon here on uh, WLTH 1370 AM. It is 727 in the PM. I got about 30 something minutes before I got to get on out of here before Dr. Williams comes in with two by four and escorts me out personally. Don't want that to happen. Uh, if you got something to say, please call in now, 219-885-1371. That number again, 219-885-1371. Uh, I thought this story was absolutely tragic, horrific. Uh, this happened in New York City. A 19-year-old uh, woman was stabbed. Her and her twin sister were both stabbed in an attack in Brooklyn, in a Brooklyn a bodega after the sisters rejected a suspect's advances and turned uh, uh, this man stabbed both of them and he recently turned himself in. Um, she, the girl's name was Samaya Spain. She was killed and her twin sister was wounded after the stabbing at Snope Natural, Natural Plus in Park Slope in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, they said the man Vale Kelly, Vio Kelly, was accused of exploding with anger when Samia Sp Samaya Spain refused to share her phone number. Samaya Spain was then stabbed in the neck and chest, and her twin sister was slashed in the arm. The two girls were at the deli with their brother, and they were just going to buy snacks for a family game night. That was when they ran into Kelly and his friend, who were two strangers. Witnesses said that the attacker was drunk and asked Samaya for her number. She told him that she was not interested. She was not interested in, in this man. He began arguing with this young lady and left the scene, but the police said that he returned with friends and began shoving the twins, the two girls. This man is arguing with two girls because one of them doesn't want to give her his phone number. 
The siblings and bodega workers managed to force the belligerent man out of the shop and lock the door, but he waited outside armed with a knife and started screaming at Samaya. Wow. They tried to fight him off, but the attacker managed to stab Samaya and slash her sister. Witnesses say that Samaya later died at the hospital. Kelly allegedly fled the scene and left the knife behind. Now, this man has prior arrests, including robberies, which is, you know, truly, truly unfortunate. I mean, look, we talk on this show all the time about violence, about systemic violence, about cultural violence. We talk about the prison industrial complex of mass incarceration. This this type of individual, this man right here is exactly who should be incarcerated. This is the type of man who should be incarcerated. Okay, not people with a little dime bag or something. Scumbags like this need to be need to be uh locked up. Straight up. 100% locked up. Now, one of the reasons that I wanted to do this story is because really in in learning about this story, I came to a very sobering conclusion. And that is that the women, and if you're a man, specifically, the women in our lives, our moms, our sisters, our daughters, our girlfriends, wives, whatever, have all kinds of creepy and scary experiences with men that we, have, we know nothing about. That really hit home for me. That right there really hit home for me uh, because, look, I understand that, uh, you know, men are the overwhelming majority of murder victims in our society, the overwhelming majority of assault victims in our society. That That's just statistically what it is. But women are a lot more vulnerable than us. And the type of the type of assaults that they suffer and the type of aggression that they suffer is a different type of aggression than I experience. You know, if if I'm walking down the street, a guy has to say, look, this dude's six feet tall. He about two hundred and some pounds. You know, if I do if I try to fight him, I'm gonna either have to shoot him. Or like we're gonna have to be fighting for all we're gonna we're gonna be fighting all day because this is a grown man. Unfortunately, a lot of men see a woman and just see prey. And that is it. And that really makes this stories like this so hard to really um to to really process and it's it's very depressing for me i think about the women in my life and stories like this make me afraid to ask what kind of creepy experiences and scary experiences they have you know experience with men you know uh if i mean get if you're a woman out there 219-885-1371 Two one nine eight eight five thirteen seventy one. Please call in if you have if you, you know. I I think on some level, us as men, we need to know this. We need to know this. I think about myself. I just go, you know, I'm not a creep. You know, and I think ninety five percent of men are not creeps at all, and aren't viewing women as just prey to be preyed upon. But there is that 5% of dudes out there who I think probably ruin it for the rest of us as men. These dudes make it hard for the rest of us as men to have a, a decent reputation. A lot of women are apprehensive to even talk to men because of people like this idiot. She just didn't want to give him his, his her phone number, and he stabbed her to death. Stabbed her and her sister. They could have both been dead. 
you heard this girl's mother in her in the intro talking about the pain that she's going to live with for the rest of her life not having her child. And it's all because some man could not take no for an answer? Come on now. Come on, brothers. We got to do better than this. We got to do better than this. Let me get this caller. Hello, caller. Hello, Jay Scott. Yeah, you got one minute. Uh, I forgot. Let me say this before you before you, before you get started. Let me say to the audience, a uh, new rule from the station, two calls per show. Second call is one minute. So you got a minute. Okay, I could you know I could dig that. Listen, this is what I want to say. I call back to give you a compliment. Thanks. You know you missed your calling, man. You should have went to the school of Juilliard. <laughs> I know that you are classically trained too. I mean, what, well, you know, hip hop and classically trained because you went to the the performing school yes, of Arthur yes. Emerson. Am I correct? Yes. yes. I just called to give you a compliment about that. But you know that uh, lady that's living with the pain of her daughter being lost like that you know mm-hmm. what yes, yes she'll come out better she she would not live through the pain if he was fed to the lions or to the alligators or threw in a layer of hot steel thank you you have all a right good now, I, I wouldn't blame her for, for for think feeling that way either i really would not feel blame her for feeling that way either uh like i said i'm, I'm really interested to hearing about uh the women who are, are listening about experiences that you guys have possibly had with uh men you know creepy experiences like i said i it's it's hard for me to think about i don't want to think about my mother i want to think about my sister my niece who's young the same age my niece is the same age as these girls are were well are and were uh 19 years old i i I really struggle to to think that maybe my niece has, has had creepy experiences with boys at her school or with men on the street maybe harassing her and being lecherous. I I don't understand the, the sort of instinct that that comes from. I, I don't understand what these men think being lecherous and being inappropriate and being stalkerish and being weird and creepy is going to get them. Like, they have to know women are not going to, like, Oh my God, he's so creepy. Like, let me go and you know sleep with this guy who's just being a creep. Like, I I don't know what they what they're expecting to get out of this. Let me take this caller. Hello, caller. Okay. Uh, What's up? We gotta remember, babe. One okay. one minute. Solomon Gamora. I'm gonna leave it at that. All right. Okay. okay. Yes. Yes. All right. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I I agree with Cleveland on some level. Uh. Obviously, we, you know, we do have a, we are living in, in very uh, sinful times. And and we are are living in a time where sin is being sort of celebrated and, and, and sort of exalted and held up. That's how you end up with people like P. Diddy. <laughs> you know, you heard what Usher had to say about living with P. Diddy, being sent to live, live with P. Diddy at 14 years old. And... Uh, seeing all kinds of things inappropriate. And when he was asked whether he'd want his kids to live with P. Diddy, he said, hell no. <laughs> I don't blame Usher one bit for saying that, uh, even if some of the things are true. Um, but yeah, as men, we really, I, I think a lot of us re- truly are not thinking about that enough. That the women in our lives do have a lot of creepy experiences. With men. They really do. And it is absolutely a problem that I think makes a lot of, you know, women very apprehensive to even want to talk to men. Or even deal with men. I mean, I've heard a lot of women say that the reason they became lesbian is because men are so aggressive and so you know violent and 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 so i I, i've i mean i've always taken that with a grain of salt but when i hear about things like this i can't help but think that they may have a point i could understand why somebody why a woman after having the type of experiences that some of these sisters have with brothers be like you know what i'm not even going to deal with men i just want to deal with other women now that's it you know and that's not to say that women can't be treacherous and 
all kinds of things on their own. We know that there are women out there who themselves are menaces to society. But this seems to be a sort of endemic thing with us as men. And the 95% of us who are not creepy, you know, we need to see dudes like this being creepy and step in and do something about it. I know a lot of dudes are like, no, no, you know, you know, I ain't, I ain't saying nothing. If she ain't my mama or my sister or my girlfriend, whatever, bump that. This is a member of your community. This young woman was a member of your community. Um, I don't know why the shop owner <clears throat> in this story, because they said the shop owner kicked the guy out, locked the door. I don't know why at this point he doesn't call the police while the girls are in the store. While him and the girls are in the store and that and, and have the police break all this up. I don't know why they leave the store after this because they say the man leaves and then he comes back. So I'm get well, I guess when he left, they thought he just decided to go home, I'm guessing. But if I'm that shopkeeper and he's he's kicking up so much dust in this store, I'm calling the police. Screw all that. I'm calling the doggone police. Let them deal with his drunk behind. Seriously. Let them deal with him. Because they said that this man has prior arrests, including for robbery. Yeah, this dude has a history of aggression. And he was drunk, they said. So, you know, again... We need to take, we as men really have to be more aware of the type of uh, indignities and injustices that our, the women in our, our lives suffer on a daily basis due to their gender. And you know, I'm not, I'm not some hardcore feminist. I've, you know, I, if you listen to the show, you know how I feel about white liberals and the colored people who love them, who push the divisive form of feminism to drive a wedge between black men and black women, in my opinion. Um, but that doesn't mean that I believe that they're wrong about everything. They're definitely not wrong about this type of stuff. This stuff does go on. I've seen it go on. And it is sickening to think about the sheer amount of, like I said, creepy and, and awful experiences that the women in my life have gone through that I don't have no idea about just because they are women. And just because there are men out there who believe that because they are women that they are prey. Let me get this caller. Hello, caller. Yes. I'm just calling to uh, answer the questions you were asking. Yes, yes. <clears throat> yeah. And one of the things I want to say as a mother of a daughter is that it's, it's so strange that, you know, we have racism. We have all kind of sexism. We have all kind of isms. But most of these things, most people have to wait to get to be a certain age before they really experience what it is they've been taught to fear. But we literally come out of the womb as women knowing that we are already a weaker sex and that we're weaker than just about everything and anything. And it's so easy to be a victim just because of who you are not. You're not super strong. You know, you're not able to get away with uh, just being able to bully somebody unless you're like a lot of women now that are more manly or whatever it is. You're always taught from day one, long before men even have to worry about when they get old enough to become prey. Women, when we get to be of any age that we can walk and talk, especially when we start being old enough to go to a store or even with someone else, that you have to watch it. Don't talk, don't leave the, uh, your side, whether it's your parents or your older brother or somebody, because you come into this world being prey. Mm. Uh, thank you for your call. Oh, man, that to me, that is, for me, that is, you know, heartbreaking to think about. I mean, it's, it really is. It really is heartbreaking to think about um, that, you know, so many of our women truly go through life feeling that way um it, it 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 is it is tragic and i think like i said a lot of it happens because i don't think we as men 
shame that type of weird stalkerish behavior and more you know i know we, we live in a world now where you're not allowed to you're not allowed to support violence in any capacity but look i, I will say that like in, in a world where people's fathers and brothers and uncles are putting in work and and really being there for their daughters and being there to protect their daughters i don't think this happens anywhere near as much i'm sorry I think that a lot of this happens because black men have been systemically taken out of our homes by mass incarceration, the two tiered legal system, because so many of our men have fallen prey to drugs and alcohol. Um, that was sort of systemically. We know now whether it's through we talked about earlier in the show about the heroin that was put in our communities in the 70s or crack in the 80s. We know now that the CIA was helping the Nicaraguan drug cartels flood our communities with crack in the 80s think about how many black men how many black women grew up without black fathers strong black fathers strong black brothers and strong black men because of the drug epidemic and because of the things in, in our society uh have left so many of our sisters vulnerable and that's why like we we really i think as men have to take that into account we're not like white people in that sense okay white people have not had the systemic uh evisceration of their families the way that we we have okay uh, when we see young black girls or or even young black boys we can't assume that they have a father at home or even a mother at home a lot of times let's just be real you know we can't assume that they have people who are protecting them when we see kids going through stuff or young people going through stuff where they're being feeling vulnerable and looking vulnerable you know it might be uh you know it might be in all of our best interests for us to sort of of uh, take that into account when we're looking at these kids walking around the streets of Gary looking lost. You know, you know, uh, it, it breaks my heart to think about how many of these young girls have been preyed upon and are being currently preyed upon by that 5%. I, 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 I genuinely don't think that it's more than 5%. I, I don't think that it's the majority of men. I don't think the majority of men are creeps like that. I just don't see it. I'm sorry. I, I just don't see the majority of men being creepy like that. But that 5%, that 5% is flourishing because we don't have the strong black men in our communities. So those of us who are around, like I said, if you if, if you out and about and you see a, a young sister dealing with that, again, I'm not saying you got to fight a, a whole army full of guys. But if you can offer her any type of assistance whatsoever, then I, I would hope that you would do it or at least do your best. You know, at least call the police, you know, at least at the very, very least call the police. Don't just say it's not my problem. Because I know a lot of black men now are, 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 are feeling like, you know, sisters are stuck up and don't you know appreciate black men and, and and have an issue with black men especially on social media so when they they see a sister and they think oh it's not my problem you know she probably hates black men she probably you know a feminist and, and don't want a black man's aid and assistance don't assume that don't assume that we can't allow things like this happen we can't allow to let our moms our sisters our daughters our girlfriends our wives our cousins, our family members, all, you know, our co-workers be victimized in this way. This is tragic. Rest in peace to Miss uh, Samaya Spain. Um, my heart goes out to her twin sister, especially, who, who was stabbed as well. She's been a twin her whole life, and now she has to live the rest of her life without the person she came out of the womb with. My, uh, my heart goes out to... Um, her mom, LaShawn Goodwin, you know, God bless her. You know, uh, you heard her in the intro and how how pain, how much pain she was in. I could only imagine what type of horrible experiences and creepy experiences that she herself has experienced over the years. And now she has to have her daughter being taken away by a scumbag who just couldn't say, who couldn't take no for an answer. All right, folks, when I get back, we going to mop up. Stay with us. 
on WLTH 1370 AM. Straight out of the cannon. Be right back after this.